Hey YouTube people, Cameron here with C Butters Tech and it's 2025 and Thunderbolt 5 is here. Now we've seen Thunderbolt come out on somewhat of a five year cadence. And right now I'm looking at two different Thunderbolt 5 docking stations because with that five year cadence, this may be the last dock you need for a long time. The Anchor Prime TB5 docking station and the CalDigit Thunderbolt Station 5 TS5. And if you looked at the spec sheet of both of these uh, Thunderbolt docks, they both have 2.5 gigabit ethernet. They both support up to 120 gigabits per second transfer. They both have 140 watt power delivery to the device that they're connected to. So they're pretty similar. Where they vary a little bit is in the implementation. So we're gonna look at these two docking stations a little bit closer. One of the big areas where I think the Anchor excels is, is you're comparing these apples to apples you have this massive power brick that's off to the side of the competitor one, um, which is bad for two reasons compared to the anchor, in my opinion. So, you know, we are comparing apples to apples. Here's the input on the CalDigit, and here's the input on the anchor. But the anchor has all the circuitry, AC adapting circuitry built into it, and there's two advantages to this. One, you just need a simple cable to the back, no brick. Two, the weight of the power brick is in the docking station where it actually helps you because when you're plugging things in, this is a very solid base where something like this one, it's, it's actually, this piece is quite light and the anchor is quite hefty, which is good in this scenario uh, because when you're plugging things in, you don't want it to flip out. You don't want it, the cable tension to kind of torque it. That can be a big problem. If we go ahead and compare these two just from an overall perspective, uh, Anchor has two USB-Cs, 10 gigabit per second. Same with the Cal Digit. The Anchor has a USB-A on the front. Uh, they both have headphone jacks on the front as well. SD card reader on the Cal Digit is on the front, but on the Anchor, it's on the left-hand side. It's still easily accessible. Um, and going around to the back on both of these devices, let's unplug the Cal Digit for a moment. There's the other benefit that you get with the Anchor dock, which is it already has an adapter for HDMI and display port ready to go. The Cal Digit, might be fine for some monitors that are already set up with alternative display in on the Thunderbolt USB-C ports. Both have 2.5 gigabit networking and uh, this CalDigit has an extra Thunderbolt port to string things along uh, on Windows devices. It can support up to three monitors where the Anchor does only advertise two. So that's your comparison. One of the other big differences with the Anchor is the Anchor has the extra lighting effects on the top to let you know when it's on and when certain devices are plugged in. And the other big thing, Anchor, known for their charging capabilities, these front ports have up to 45 watt power delivery, where the Cal Digit, only one of them has 20 watt, watt power delivery, and the other one is 7.5. So because of the power brick and the only 20 watt charging on the front, you know, if you want to plug in your phone in an easily accessible place, this is the place to do it. Um, I think the Anchor is a much better pick when it comes to quality of life. Okay, so in order to test the Thunderbolt 5 capabilities of this, Believe it or not, Thunderbolt 5 devices are still slightly rare in the wild, but they're coming online quickly. For now, I have this 2 terabyte SSD external drive that does support Thunderbolt 5. And I wanted to demonstrate what kind of speeds Thunderbolt 5 can get you with the same drive. And how do I demonstrate that? Well, I have a Surface Pro on the right using Thunderbolt 4, even though it's a Thunderbolt 5 device, and you can see the speeds there for Thunderbolt 4. 
And the max speed that we got on the read was 3874.82. Okay, well, let's plug that into the anchor dock on the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro, which does have Thunderbolt 5, and see how the speeds improve. Now, I would use the same software for this, but uh, they're di completely different OSs, so I'm going to be using a different disk speed test, but we should, the sequential style reads should be the same between the two for a mm, mild comparison. So let's go ahead and put this drive and connect it up to the Thunderbolt 5 anchor dock and run the test. Okay, and there you can see we are getting 4,748 versus 3874. So we're seeing a lot higher megabyte per second on the read and the writes as well are quite a bit higher. All right, we're here in a tricky office situation um, that uses a Thunderbolt laptop to connect to the rest of the accessories. The obstacles that we have to deal with that so far have required three different devices, USB-C to DisplayPort adapter, uh, that actually has a very short cable here. We've got a USB 3.0 switch and we have a power adapter underneath the desk that's mounted down there and we still have issues with it. For one, this particular adapter doesn't seem to support the right resolutions and refresh rates for this large ultra wide monitor. Also, the 65 watt USB-C adapter we have connected in here does not power all laptops equally and a lot of them complain they're not getting enough power. So hopefully the Anchor device is gonna help us solve all of these problems and clean up the space so it's a lot easier to work here. All right, let's take care of this. Okay, so I was able to get the Anchor dock installed and it's working great. And what's even better than the fact that this computer is now powered 100%, not complaining, uh, is the fact that if we look here, go ahead and come closer. What you'll see is that while before we were only able to get 60 hertz on the other adapter, this supports the full resolution. We can go all the way up to 144 hertz on the display. No flickering and look how smooth. Well, you can't see through the camera, but take my word for it. It's pretty smooth. And, and what's most cool about this is it's all going through one single cable. So you're done with your laptop. All you do is unplug that cable and you're on your way. Okay, so at this point, we've got a really nice desk set up. You can see the anchor dock here with its lighting effects. Really nice, um, but we're testing a Thunderbolt dock here. And if you watch the channel, you know at C Butters Tech we sell a DIY eGPU kits. Uh, link in the description if you want to see it. But let's test and see if this will work with the Anchor dock as well. Uh, so we've got a Thunderbolt 4 cable. This is a Thunderbolt 5 dock, and this is but this is a Thunderbolt 4 eGPU. So let's just test the compatibility. I'll plug this up right here and plug in the Thunderbolt 4 cable and we can now hear that it is spooled up and you may not have noticed what happened there but one of the really cool things about this anchor dock as I've been playing with it is the fact that when it needs to reconfigure things it doesn't shut everything down for example I could tell that uh, you know, it was spooling up the eGPU and the mouse actually went away just for a second, but the display stayed up. It didn't sit there and flicker, which I've seen a lot of other uh, solutions do. So let's see. We, yep, yeah, we have an RTX 4000 SFF ADA here. This eGPU is active all via one cable on this laptop. 
And let's go ahead and run a little Furmark session, see how well it performs. And there we go, chugging along at 166 frames a second. So all over one cable to this dock, we've got power to the laptop, we're able to use an external GPU, we're able to run that monitor at the full 144 hertz refresh rate. Um, pretty impressed with this Anchor Dock. It's a really solid piece of kit. If you're interested in picking up an Anchor docking station with Thunderbolt 5, this is going to be future proof for a lot of years at this point. Anyways, take a look at the link in the description below. Be sure to get subscribed up for more cool content, and we'll see you on the next video.